Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here, Wednesday the 19th of February 2020. Do you think I've got enough heads? So, in previous recent videos, I sort of alluded to the story behind these three and the fact that I've got another one on the way, which hopefully will be a true oil in frame late A65 head but without any fins missing. That allegedly has arrived, but I haven't got it. So it's uh, somewhere close by. But the main purpose of this video is that a uh, friend and collaborator has kindly lent me his Fury head because this is complete with valve seats and also has had all the machining completed and obviously as you can see has had valve guides inserted too as it was uh, from a complete motor before it was damaged and uh, he's in the process of building this fury up but isn't uh, at the stage where he's building up the engine yet so he's kindly lent me the head just so we can take measurements of this with respect to uh, the tappet bores, the valve guide bores and the valve seats so we can complete the machining of this. And you know what, the more you look at this and that, it just makes you think that actually these are possibly machined. Certainly, um, the uh, the base for the washers that act as the valve spring seats have been machined. Just trying to see what sort of machine marks are on those. They're definitely smoother. Maybe they have been machined. But anyway, we can check that out. But certainly we haven't got valve seats, so they need doing. And actually when you look at the uh, valve guide uh, holes, they, they, they haven't been machined. So anyway, the reason why I'm telling you this is that tomorrow morning I'm taking the, these heads over to Wards Engineering in uh, Rugby who uh, recently sleeved and bored the A70 Lightning barrels, did a great job on that, and he's uh, kindly agreed to, to undertake this job. And uh, as I say, we'll use that head as the reference if we need to, to complete this one, and we'll take uh, a set of guides, valves, and also I do ha uh, I've been lent as well uh, an example, an example tappet that's the right diameter but not actually the right tap it so we'll get these over towards and uh, we'll get some progress on the uh, on the cylinder heads uh, once that machine is completed and the valve seats are inserted then we're just waiting for a full set of tappets and an auto advanced unit and then we, we should be there um, but it does mean once we get this head back that we can uh, we can fit it uh, onto the onto the waiting fury Right, I'll bring you back once I've uh, taken these in the morning over towards. Um, we'll see whether or not he's got the ability to uh, take any stills or footage as he's doing this job over the next uh, few weeks. I should think it'll take uh, a little while to fit it into schedule. But uh, let's see what we can ar arrange with with uh, him to, uh, to get some sort of uh, record of what he does. Right, next morning, and we're about to uh, to leave to take the parts over to uh, Wards at Rugby. So we've got uh, my head, we've got Richard's head in the box, just uh, ensuring that these don't rattle around. We've got a cam. Uh, that cam, which is the inlet cam, does need a tiny little bit of work in that it needs 
a uh, plug inserting in that central hole there uh, to finish that off. And then a small box of goodies there which includes the, uh, the valves, valve guides, valve springs, uh, valve spring seat washers, collets and collars. Uh, so everything to provide all the reference points then that uh, wards will need to uh, to finish this head off. So uh, I'll turn you on again once uh, I get over there and then uh, while we're there I won't be able to film I don't think without his permission but uh, I'll have a chat to him just to see if I say if he can take uh, any stills or some form of uh, recording of the work that he does, does as it progresses but I would imagine I'd need to leave this stuff there for uh, several weeks um, for finishing so he can uh, um, progress it in, in bits and pieces in between his other jobs because he is quite busy over there but uh, he does do a great job. All right, I'll bring you back shortly when uh, we've travelled the uh, 40 or so minutes over there. Right, hi again everybody. Uh, so, apologies because uh, I was in a bit of a a rush when I went over to the engineers and because they were busy too then uh, I didn't get any footage of me dropping the, the head, off, head off over at uh, Wards Engineering but um, they're, uh, they're on Facebook so you can look their details at Wards Engineering in Rugby and uh, the proprietor there is, uh, is Richard so uh, feel free to, to give him a call but uh, a very nice knowledgeable gentleman so the, uh, the, the Fury head with uh, the lone head to use as a reference um, from Richard is uh, is with it and just to remind you then what he's doing is is inserting valve seats he's uh, machining the valve guide boards bores and the shim bores to the correct dimensions uh, he's inserting the valve guides with their circlips and uh, installing the valves and springs and paraphernalia and um, once that's done then we'll just be waiting for uh, for tappets um, I've got the shims so that's the work that's um, in hand at the moment over at wards so in the meantime we can concentrate on finishing some of the other jobs so let's just uh, do a a quick walk around so um, front wheel front end pretty much done and uh, that includes a lot of the e electrics because we've got an original front hen end harness that came with the headlight as, as one unit and the reason why this is a front hen end with spades on it is because there is a connector block under the tank which um, we'll see again now then it's up there, you can see there's a, there's two spade connector blocks, one on either side of the uh, top frame tubes. Uh, and that's because these models had uh, quickly detachable front ends for when you obviously wanted uh, of an evening to go off and do some serious scrambling on it. Um, not. So front end pretty much done. Obviously we've got the head in hand, but coming around this side of the motor then, on this side we've got the... Uh, clutch operation to complete and uh, we're just awaiting uh, the correct clutch cable for that and that's on its way and anybody that's seen the last video on the A70 Lightning will understand the issue that we've had for that with that and uh, we've resolved that on the A70 so we could do the same thing on the 35 the cables are um, basically the same hopefully uh, there are other bits and pieces obviously we can't do the carbs yet. Um, once we've adjusted the clutch though we can fit this cover properly. We do have gaskets that need to be made up because uh, the primary drive gasket is the only one that I don't have from you know, pretty significant X factory stock but um, what I have done is purchased some uh, gasket material uh, oil, what they call oil resistant jointing and so I'll be making a couple of gaskets from that and that'll be one of the uh, videos in the in the near future so that will then complete the primary case 
Next job then is that the uh, engine inner side of the primary case hasn't been drilled, that casting hasn't been drilled for the rear engine plate, but that's quite a simple job to do. And obviously we've got the rear engine plate that we can actually bolt up and get the, uh, the right positioning and go straight through. So that's simple, but that's a job to do. And then on the rear end, we've, uh, we've got the correct chain wheel to fit because that one on, that's on there is, the, is correct for a larger chain, so it's off one of the uh, bigger twins. And we've got a thinner one for a, a smaller pitch chain, which is over here somewhere still. And that's because we've been uh, cleaning that one up that was in stock, and there were a few aberrations on it, but it's cleaned up pretty well and uh, I'll give it another go cleaning but most of the uh, original zinc plating has held up held up quite well one slide is slight one side of it is slightly better than the other so uh, that'll then uh, determine which way around we put it on i.e. Uh, the good side will be on the outer side so we've got that to fit which entails taking the uh, the rear wheel out and then once we've done that and we've done the primary drive and we've done the drilling for the rear engine plate we can then put the uh, the rear brake sorry there, there's the engine plate and footrest footrest is detachable so you can take the uh, the primary cover off without taking the having to take the rear engine plate off um, we've got the rear brake pedal um, but also there's a, a mechanism here as well that the brake pedal butts up against and that allows you to adjust the height of uh, the brake pedal itself against the footrest. It's quite a clever piece of uh, design so that's adjustable. Then we put the rear brake rod in onto the uh, rear brake lever and then all that's required to complete this side is, well we've got one seat hinge to do because we need to keep the seat detachable at the moment uh, but that we've gone then got the high level exhaust which is going to be which is going to run along this side and uh, we've got the pipes they're all done because we made patterns up from the bandit but we've um, got a job to do to try and make up some uh, silencers that uh, as far as possible replicate the uh, the original design but that's going to be difficult oh and of course the other job is that once we've got the correct sprocket on the rear wheel and the rear wheel is in then we can finish installing the chain which is already installed around you can't see it in there uh, which you can it's installed around the rear sprocket down there somewhere and you might be thinking well Hang on a minute, why is, why is there an open gap there? And that's simply symptomatic of the fact that these aren't a matching pair of engine cases and are probably from different revisions, but we've, uh, we've machined them up as a pair. So there's always going to be a bit of a gap there, but I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. That can, that can stay like it. Again, another indication of uh, the history of this build, effectively. So that's... The, uh, the right hand side, or uh, in old language, the off side. And then if we walk around and look at the left hand side, near side, then obviously we've got the timing cover to fit once we've timed up the cams in the head. Um, but then on this side, you're pretty much, you're pretty much there really on this bike everything happens on the off side on the right hand side nothing much else to do on this side other than um, with respect to what we've mentioned before installing the uh, the clutch cable and that's exactly the same process uh, as on the uh, the twins of the same area the a60 uh, so the a70 that we did the other day So that's the plan. Once that's all done, final thing would be uh, tank off and finish the wiring. That's always the last job. And because, of course, we the rear 
loom is is unique obviously to the bike but pretty standard with respect to all the electrical components on this then I do have um, looms from that area era for the twins for the big twins and uh, what we're going to do is do what we did on the bandit and we're going to offer it up and basically hack the front off it where we need to splice the rear harness into uh, the front junction block under the tank that I showed you earlier. So there we are. Um, those are the plans, not necessarily in that order, but that's what we've got to do. Sounds a lot, but um, just got to keep plugging at it and uh, things will get done. Um, we'll do a bit of tidying up on this bench as well. A lot of this is paraphernalia associated with uh, what we need to either use or reference to, uh, to complete the bike. It looks an awful lot. But there's lots of silences down here because we're going to be butchering two pairs to make up one pair to try and get the right profile and the right length and we're going to go at that and then underneath that there's a pair of Campbell geometrics pattern silences for the 71 twins that attempt to um, emulate the original BSA ones i.e. that style of uh, uh, reverse cone standard issue silencer from 71 and um, I mean Campbell Geometrics is um, obviously uh, a blast from the past brand wise as well but they're just not very stylish patterns they don't really that faithfully, faithfully um, replicate the end caps at all they're very squared off and also I think as I've showed you before I won't move them out oh, there it is um, you can see they, they stamp on an absolutely bloody huge logo as well which is very visible which I hate so uh, we're not going to be using those and I'll probably sell them and see if anybody else wants them cheap uh, even though it's got my name on them so there you go um, and a bit of tidying up to do on this side um, for those of you that are eagle-eyed that might be an indication as to what we'll be thinking about next when uh, the uh, the Fury SS and the uh, the lightning on the far side there uh, are finished and then underneath that we've got an original motor plus BSA motor plus seat cover for uh, 72 twins which has the uh, geometric design that tapers to a point at the front uh, well it's not of relevance to the fury but let me just show you so on the 72 style twins they had this squared pattern on the seat, but this is wrong. This is squared linearly all the way to the front. And when in fact the original seats, these lines actually tapered in more to a point here uh, and curved in. So I'm not going to replace that seat cover now. That's a, that's a brand new pattern seat, which actually fits well and actually looks the part, even though the, uh, the surface pattern isn't quite right. Uh, but anyway, we've got one to put on at some point in the future if uh, if we're getting a bit uh, ail about things. So there we go. I thought um, I said I'd just do a quick update there just um, to complement the fact that we've got uh, the head in and, and those are the plans for uh, the next couple of weeks to try and tidy up as many of those jobs as we, as we can on that. Okay, that's enough rambling on for me. Thanks very much for... Uh, watching everybody thanks for your interest in any comments and subscriptions and i'll see you again soon and we'll crack on thanks a lot bye, -bye.